to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. But today, we're going to take you out of the mountains and tell you a little bit more about the history of Arizona with Marshall Trimble. Marshall. Uh, Joe George and Grant Wheeler were a couple of Cochise County cowboys, and um, they decided to try to up their station in life by robbing a train. It was becoming very popular. Uh, and they had nine train robberies right, right here in Arizona uh, between 1887 and 1922. So it was, it was a popular place. What made Arizona so special to them? The way I should, I'll, I should mention here that um, um, in 1890, around there, uh, New Mexico made Robin Trains, gave it the death penalty. And uh, because, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty serious business. And so are the outlaws going to rob a train in New Mexico? No, they're going to sit there, watch it pass through Doubtful Canyon, and when you come into Arizona, then they'll rob the train in Arizona. Only one guy got hanged uh, ever in the West for robbing a train, and that was uh, Black Jack Ketchum. And, uh, and his, the hangman uh, miscalculated his, uh, the rope, uh, the drop, and they, they, Jack lost his head uh, over it. And, and uh, that might have had something to do with why they rescinded the law a little later. But finally, Arizona thinks, hey, if New Mexico is going to have, and these guys are just waiting to get into Arizona to rob the trains, let's just, we'll get the law, we'll pass that law too. But there's one problem with a law like that. What was the problem with that law? Did it not discourage train robberies? Some of these outlaws were gentlemen, and they wouldn't hurt anybody. They're just like Butch Cassidy, you know, they're just train robbers. And, um, and we don't, we, as a jury, we won't, we won't convict. Uh, so literally, you could actually rob a train, and with the death penalty hanging over you, the jury would acquit you. You could get away with train robbery for a very short time, and they figured it out. <laughs> you know, it didn't take them long to figure out, hey, we better do something about this death penalty because the juries are not, equi are not uh, uh, finding them guilty. And so both Arizona and New Mexico dropped the, hang, uh, the death penalty uh, capital offense for train robbery. But for a short time it was, long enough to get Blackjack Ketchum. Well, anyway, Grant Wheeler and Joe, uh, uh, Grant Wheeler and, and Joe George are going to rob the train as it leaves, this is 1895, just as it leaves Wilcox and goes up that incline on the way up to Kochi Station. And um, so they go into town, Soto's hardware store, and they buy a box of dynamite. And just to throw people off, they're saying, um, we're, going to, we're going to go into mining, we're going to start being miners. And of course, people say, you guys, oh, you are as cowboys, not good ones at that. But um, and um, um, Joe George is kind of a surly, sour guy, and, and Grant's a young, good-looking kid and uh, with, from a good family in Utah, but um, they're, um, they're train robbers now. So they go out, they, they uh, plant the dynamite uh, up a ways, and then leave their horses hobbled up there. They walk back down, and then they'll ju they jump on the train, uh, on the engine, because it's going so slow, and they jump on the engine, and they, again, the same old routine, uh, they uh, order the, uh, 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 con the, the conductor to disconnect the cars, uh, leave the passengers down below waiting, and, and the, uh, the mail car, and they'll just take the engine and the uh, express car up and blow up the safe. And so um, they get up there, and they, um, they, they, get it, they go into the express car, and they look around, and there's, um, there's a safe there, all right, and there are about 10 sacks of, of silver, full of silver pesos. And they're thinking, uh, and at this time, by the way, they're called Dobie Dollars. Dobie Dollars. Why are they called Dobie Dollars? Dobie Dollars, as a Dobie, uh, and because they're Mexican dollars. And um, so there's all these sacks uh, of silver dollars, silver pesos lying there. And they ignore that. They think if they got them lying out here in the open, there must be really something in the safe. So they decide, well, let's, let's stick some dynamite in there. These boys had never played with dynamite before. And they, uh, uh, they, they put a few sticks in there and then they light the fuse. And they run out and into the desert and lie down on the ground and cover their heads and waited. Well, there's a little explosion. And uh, when the smoke clears, they go back in. The door on the safe is still intact. So uh, 
they said, well, let's try a little bit more. So they put some more dynamite down there, a little more this time, and same thing, light the fuse, run out, cover up their heads, and wait. And um, another, la another loud boom. And um, so they come back, and it's still intact. They said, well, we'll fix this. They took all of the dynamite they had left in the box, and then they put the silver pesos on top of it for ballast. And they figure this will blow that safe open. And they light the fuse, and out in the desert they go again, and uh, cover up their heads. And this is not this is not a, a boom. This is a kaboom. It must have shaken all the way from Dos Cabezas to Dragoon Springs. And uh, and they, when the smoke clears, they go back in, and there is uh, uh, there's the safe. The door is wide open. And where are the pesos? They've gone flying into the desert like shrapnel. <laughs> and weren't even embedded in a telephone pole alongside the tracks. They found it later. And, um, uh, but silver pesos just went everywhere. And so um, they think, well, uh, you know, just money's in here. But there's no money in there, or just a few bucks. So they cuss a little bit and stick the money, what few dollars they had, in their pockets, and uh, get on the horses and ride away um, foiled. Um, well, the train backs into town still a train robbery. And, um, and it, not only that, it blew the car to pieces. It was the, the whole express cars in splinters. And um, so they back back into town and announced a, a robbery. Well, would you think a posse's gonna form? Um, no, they didn't have much luck raising a posse because as soon as people found out there were pesos lying all over the desert, <laughs> they went home and got their rakes, and they went out to rake. That, that had to be the best manicured piece of real estate this side of Paradise Valley. <laughs> you know, I think I would have joined them. And I've told that story a number of times. Uh, in, uh, well, at one time, uh, I get an email the next day, and the guy says, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a treasure hunter. Uh, can you tell me about where that robbery was? <laughs> I'm going to go out and see if there's any of them pesos still there. <laughs> and I say, fellow, that was, that was 100 years ago. I don't think there'll be, they're, they're, if, they're, if they are, they're, they're probably, if they're heavy enough, they probably got buried by now by the elements. And, uh, but people still, they still like those kinds of stories. Well, in, in fact, that, that leads me into a, um, a treasure, lost treasure story, because this, this deal between Wheeler and George has been turned into a treasure story. I won't tell you which historian started it, but I really have my doubts, uh, but I, and I won't say his name because he's a good friend, <laughs> but um, there's a story about that Grant Wheeler, they took $84,000 in that robbery. Now, we know that's not true, but they got, they, he said, they, they, and they buried it in a cave in Dos Cabezas and left it there uh, and, um, uh, in, in saddlebags and stashed it. And, and then they were going to come back and get it when the heat uh, cooled, uh, you know, kind of cooled down a little bit. But, um, but there's more to that story because um, uh, they, they did, uh, a month later, <clears throat> they, they robbed, again, the same train, uh, same crew. It's like, hey guys, here we are again, <laughs> and um, and so uh, yeah, I said, uh, hi Grant, how's your, yo, how are you? Yeah, how are you doing fine? How how the kids? <laughs> but um, they stop the train and uh, do the same routine. This is over by Doubtful Canyon along the Arizona New Mexico line, <laughs> and um, they've got their dynamite stashed. The whole the same same uh, standard operating procedure, and um, uh, they they get the engine and what they thought was the express car up the road about two miles. And uh, when they uh, go to open up the, the express car, they find out they've switched the cars. Usually it was the engine and a Wells Fargo express car and the mail car, and they reversed it. And the boys, the two boys, didn't, didn't, didn't know the difference. <laughs> so so they, um, they got mad and they said, I'll get on out of here, I go on and let them go. And, and they, 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 uh, they blew up the dynamite. But uh, blowing, up, uh, uh, blowing up a car, turning one to splinters, uh, is, is, not, uh, is, is not cool with Southern Pacific Railroad. So they've got the detectives on their trail. And one of the detectives is, uh, is Billy Breckenridge, who's famous from the uh, Cochise County War, Tombstone. He was Johnny Behan's deputy down there during the Wyatt Earp days. Well, anyway, he and uh, C.S. Fly, uh, the famous photographer, uh, is now sheriff of Cochise County. 
And Fly was a man of many talents. <laughs> And uh, so he, uh, uh, so they're out there, they're hot on their trail. And somewhere along the line, uh, the boys were going to go to Colorado, I guess, and uh, until things cooled off. And it seems that Joe George had a bad snoring problem. And Grant Wheeler couldn't stand his snoring, and he was afraid it would give him away. If the posse was coming up, he was snoring so loud. So he decides to go back to Utah. And uh, he goes back and reunites with his family in Utah. And uh, uh, Joe George goes down to Mexico, where he gets into an argument with a with with a vaquero, and um, it gets shot and killed. So George is dead. When the posse, um, actually Breckenridge and Fly, catch up with Grant Wheeler, he sees the he sees it's up, and I think rather than humiliate his family, he takes his own life. He pull, pulls a pistol and shoots himself. So both guys are both guys are dead, but. Um, but how this story about a lost treasure hidden in the caves, when they blew the car, blew the train up, and there were just a few dollars in the safe, and there was no eighty-four thousand dollars in that safe. And so, but anyway, it's it it just shows you how these treasure stories go, and it just it, and it ends by saying somewhere in a cave in Dos Cabezas. Um, I've been to Dos Cabezas, and I don't think there are many caves up there, but. Um, uh, where you could hide that money and somebody not find it sooner or later. Did you ever go out there looking for it? Nope. No, that's one. I knew the story already. I, okay. <laughs> I knew the, I knew it, but that's but that's that's the whole story of, of uh, the the, the um, flying pesos and the 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 second robbery, the foiled robbery of Grant and and uh, and Joe and just uh, they should have never been outlaws. It's, it's some guys have a knack for it. <laughs> these guys, these guys don't. Well, there you have it. Another special edition right here of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains, where we took you out of the mountains into some of the other areas to explore the mysteries of Arizona. See you next time.